Hey you guys, so we're going to go ahead and start by adding a child record. Use the add foster child link. And then I believe the only thing, what's kind of nice is to enter the state where they're at. So that's very helpful for finding information later. The referring agency, which could be like Denver DHS. Um, and that honestly is all that's really needed. Uh, besides this is forcing us to put that in. So you've got the child. We're gonna go ahead and add a foster family record as well. That may be all I have to do there as well. So their case type, you can set that specifically. Okay, so from the child's record, you can then add a placement. And you'll connect the location to the test or to the family that you're needing it to go to. And then we'll enter a placement date. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this for like eight. We'll set it as a foster home. And then you'll select the foster care payer. So this is a list of organization records that are set as organization type equals foster care payer. And there, I know for sure they have like the state listed in them to help uh, support where they're at. Okay, so Sam is taking us to the placement details screen, which is kind of an overview. What's gonna be important is the child location timeline. This will manage uh, respite within this placement, but we also wanna make sure that our arrived at dates, the left location, all of those are sort of falling in line. On the placements overview page, you can see the child location timeline here as well. So one thing that I'm not sure about um, why it's happening and I need to sort of look into this is we've got this record being created. I'm going to go ahead and click that off. So I determined how the um, additional child location timeline record is being added from the cover page. This when you when you enter any of the child original location fields the child location timeline is being is being entered. So that is actually what is creating one. So we'll wanna manage that, which thankfully you can see here and making sure basically that your, a youth's child location timeline corresponds with the placements. There may be more child location timeline records because of respite than placements. But the one record that's being created, it can't be avoided. And so it needs to be managed by the team. The next thing that's important with foster care payments is the rate history. So that can be found under child accounting details. We've got an auto action that or a setting at this point that automatically enters a rate history record. It's got a base rate. I think this is accurate for Colorado. This is not gonna be accurate for any other states at this time. But you wanna make sure that the rate history has a start date of your placement date, and that right now the rate end date is empty. Sam is gonna take these daily rates and multiply it by the days in care during a particular month or interval and will create foster home um, and administration payments. So to see that in action, we're going to go to the care payments hub. And then we can run this for September, which for that youth, it'll run it um, for that month. So this is running it for all kids in care. This would be for all kids in care in the last three months. Under advanced option, there is an ability for you to trigger an overwrite for a specific interval and a specific child. 
I'll show that in a little in a later part. Um, one thing to note about that is it is necessary to actually have had a care payment record to begin with. So for a brand new kid, um, I'm not able to run the overwrite for that. All right, so this operation can take a few minutes because it's running a lot of processing for all the records. When it's done, you get this pop-up, press OK, close. So I'm going to go back to the um, child record, but I'm going to access it from the foster family side because that's what's convenient for me. And so then I'll go to the child accounting details. So at this point, um, because we ran September, there is the full month of September. We're in October at this point in time. So we've got the 30 days for these particular care payments for both foster home and administration. So the foster home is what portion is paid to the foster parent. The administration is the portion for um, the agency. There are more details about each care payment that you can see here. What you can do on this screen, uh, a couple of things. You can see a payment breakdown, so how it's made up. This is a fairly simple one. It's total number of days in that particular month um, by the daily rate, showing the, the full rate. Um, however, if there were changes mid-month, um, you would see how it's broken down here. You are able to, if you send this entire amount here to the foster family, you can enter the payment sent date and the payment net amount is updated. The bill paid is when you have received this payment from this payer. So these are all things that your team can decide to or not to um, include, but you can enter the payment end date or the payment bill paid date rather, and it'll look like everything's been paid by the payer, everything's been paid to the foster family, and you get these different amounts here. Should this vary, you can um, add the records, which I'll go ahead and add additional bill payments and payments sent in case there's any sort of like retroactive payment or you didn't for whatever reason get paid the entire amount from the payer or send the entire payment to the foster family they're just not linked um at this moment so i'll do that by the next time that you get care the other thing is once this feels really good to you you like this care payment record and you don't want to make any changes ever not ever you can click um, and tell Sam not to override. Otherwise, if Sam happens to get new information about this month, this rate, Sam will update this care payment record. So even after the care payments is run and it's run for this uh, specific interval or month, you may find out changes to the actual placement during that time. So those changes can be accounted for and can be updated. So I'm going to go to placements and let's say that we were going to add respite. So I'm going to go to the detail screen of this placement. I would then add a child location timeline, right? So a different place where the youth was within this time period. So I'll choose the respite provider they were with. And I can let the system know that, oh, from 9, 5, 20 to 9, 8, 20, they were there. I can put in that it was respite. This is a list that your team can manage. And then I can tell Sam who to make payment to. So it's defaulting to the respite provider, but should that not be the way your organization is set up, you can change it and we can default to the foster family. That's sort of up to you. Okay. Okay, so this is just uh, the details of that child location timeline. I'm going to go back to placements. And now the child location timeline, you can see, has really been updated. So we can see this here where the youth has changed from being um, when they ended the first portion of the placement to going to respite. And then Sam assumes that that youth goes back to the placement location. If I look under the specific placement, 
I can see that individual information here as well. Now to rerun, let's say I wanted to actually rerun Care Payments Hub just for that one youth. I can manually trigger it for September and then click here for show advanced options and look for in reach test and I can tell it only for this interval. If I don't select only for this interval, Sam will go back. Like if I had done it for August, it would go all the way back. August and September would overwrite it. So from here, we're going to move back to the accounting details page. And take a peek at the foster home payments for September. It's been reduced to 27 days. And you can see a new respite payment down here of uh, for three days for the total. So one thing that had not been entered was respite payments, daily rate. And so I needed to go back and enter that data, but you will see it from now on if you were to add a rate history, it should be on this form right here. So when you come in and add a rate history at the onset of a placement, you will add the dates the daily rates for each of the categories and a level of care if it um, relates. At the beginning of this video, I talked about how the rate history record was added automatically. I'm going to show you where that was done and I'm going to talk to you about what I think we should do instead. One of the things that's happening with the system is if a daily rate is entered in the back end, it's automatically entering the monthly rate. And this causes an issue if there is a change to the daily rate here, like if it has any sort of retroactive rate apply that should be applied for this particular time period and you ch update the daily rate here, it actually doesn't update this, which makes the numbers inconsistent and makes Sam not do what it needs to do to show the retroactive payments. So if a daily rate is what's needed, you're actually going to need to come and, and you use the system in the back that I'll show you in a second. You'll need to actually come in here and remove this monthly rate in order for the daily rate to take over. Um, so I actually recommend that we set up, we were, we maybe remove the um, settings in the back and make it so that the rate history is, is part of your, the process when a new placement is added for a youth. So if I go into the care payments hub, which you can access through here, you can also access through settings care payments hub. Under the payment type configuration, you can see different types of payments. Okay, so primarily you're gonna work in the foster home, the admin and the respite payments if you use this section. But again, if you add the daily rate here, it is automatically adding the monthly rates, causing an issue when you do retroactive payments. So we can click on the details here and here you can store different rate calculations. So because there may be many programs, many states, uh, many counties, all having different rates. This allows Sam to keep track of those from um, a sp specific time period, for a specific age of the youth, um, for a level of care, or other type of field that sort of designates level of care. If it's not a number scale, um, it can do it uh, by who the payer is and then the daily rate. But again, this creates that monthly rate, which then doesn't allow retroactive payments really well at all. So my suggestion is that we actually remove this out of the system. So these don't aren't automatically connected because at this moment, up until um, December 31st, every single youth will get a rate history record when a, day, when a placement is added that'll have this daily rate whether or not it's accurate or not for the particular program. I believe that this is um, Colorado's, but this isn't accurate for every program. Okay, so we'll talk about retroactive payments. When a payment rate changes for a youth, 
Um, and let's say this is like a situation where you know about it a couple months after the fact, right? That'll, that seems to be fairly common. And this youth's rate changes from 4150 to 4350. Then you're going to change the daily rate. That's if also it changed from this start date. Now, if it didn't change from this start date and this was remaining at 4150 until August 28th, and then on August 29th, it has a new rate of 4350, you're actually going to add a rate history record. But this is where we're showing that this amount here was, it should equal 4350 times 27. Let's just pull out the calculator for this. 4350 times 27. Oh, yeah, sorry, because it was 4150 times 27. Good. Okay. So now we're going to change it and it'll be whatever that other amount was. Okay. So we're going to rerun the care payments hub. I'm going to go into the care payments hub. I am going to now choose advanced options, manually trigger overwrite. I'm going to go back to September and I'm actually just going to go for this one kid. And again, this part can take a few minutes. I'm going to go back to the youth's record and the accounting details. And now it's refreshed and this has a different amount. When you're ready to discharge a youth, there's only two things that Sam really needs to make this happen. It needs the placement end date to be entered. And it needs the rate end date on the child accounting details, rate history, to be entered as well. Back on the placement end, um, I guess I want to say a couple of things is you can absolutely just enter the placement end date, but you might also consider having um, a discharge form here that has these fields and any additional that need to be entered so that when a user is ending this placement that they can ensure to capture everything that's required. Then click a child accounting details and enter the rate end date for the final rate history record. 